guys. So today I am here with my brand new home bullet journal. So long story short, I was in another town for work and I happened to come across a B5 size like term dot grid and I've been looking for one for a really long time so I picked it up and I basically just sort of held on to it. Um, I got it in the beginning of April and just about a week and a half ago decided what I wanted to do with it. So this is my home bullet journal. Excuse me. So you'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and recenter. So I did a really simple inside page because honestly this book is probably not really going to leave my house that much. Um, it is really designed to be used at home. It's going to have some sensitive information in here that I'm not going, going to want to carry around with me. So I just did kind of a simple cover. And it is so new that I don't even have my index filled in. But I wanted to walk you guys through um, a set of spreads that I recently made for a project that I am working on. So let's take a look. So lots of index. So we'll actually come back to this wish list. It actually goes with the spreads I'm going to be explaining. So what I wanted to walk you guys through is my spread for the Kamari method. So if you don't know, um, I will put the information um, in a link below, but this is from two separate books. So there are two books by this Japanese woman named Marie Kondo, so Kanmari for short. And basically her name has become synonymous with this trend. And she wrote books about tidying. It's The Magical Art of Tidying Up and, or no, oh my gosh, crazy. The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, oh my goodness. And the second book is called Spark Joy. So the first book basically walks you through um, the whole process as she lays it out. If you're interested, there's there are tons of resources online, um, but basically, it's all about getting your life organized and getting your house to to a good place where it makes you feel happy to be home and happy to see your things, right? Um, and then the second book called Spark Joy is an extension. It doesn't really change anything. It just goes more in depth explaining. So it's more of a practical guide on how to actually go through the process if you don't have KonMari like leaning over your shoulder helping you out. And there's also some illustrations in there to help you along. So I actually read the first book um, last summer, I think it was, and I really wanted to start doing it, but I wasn't quite ready to commit. And it's one of those things that if you're not ready to commit, you're going to start and you won't finish. So I waited and I, it was, my house was really starting to bug me because actually I love, I love my apartment. It makes me so happy to come home. Um, and I always miss it when I leave, but it was getting to where I just had kind of too much stuff and I finally decided that it was time to get spark joy and sit down and actually do the process. So one of the things that I did, and I apologize, I thought this would be a shorter video, but it might be a little bit long-winded because I like to chat. Um, but one of the first things that I did was I decided I wanted to have sort of a reference guide because even though I've read the book before, um, I thought it would be helpful to just really write it down and just kind of get it into my brain even more. So what I have here, and I'm actually going to try and be fancy and zoom. Okay. So what I have here are her six basic rules. So the first is to commit yourself to tidying up, which is basically where I was, where I wanted to do it, but I wasn't ready to commit until recently. Two is imagine your ideal lifestyle, which is this next page over here I'll go back to. Three, finish discarding first. So basically finish discarding and then store. Um, and I will kind of go through that in my explanation on how I'm actually doing this. Um, four, tidy by category, not by location. So for example, don't, um, don't tidy the cleaning supplies in your kitchen and forget about the ones in your bathroom. Get all of your cleaning supplies together and tidy all at once. That's kind of what she's going for. Um, follow the right order, which is down here. I'll zoom out and show you guys that. And ask yourself if it sparks joy. So let's look at the right order. I'm going to have to zoom. Okay, so let's get all of this. 
So this is the correct order and you'll see I did some little um, doodles. This was something that she did in the Spark Joy book, but I actually drew some of my things, especially, especially when I got down to kimono and sentimental items. So the order is you do clothing, books, papers, kimono, which is like miscellaneous like anything else and then sentimental sentimental items last and the reason that she says this is that she says that with clothes you usually know if something sparks joy because for example if it's been in your closet for six months and you it's not because it's a Halloween costume you probably it probably doesn't spark joy in you because you're not wearing it kind of thing um, and then you move on to books so usually you have your favorite books and so I love books. I grew growing up. I always had a huge personal library and I've actually gotten better about it over the years because one I'm allergic to old book mold like true story. I used to work in a library and whenever I did like rare books handling I would have to physically leave the building because like I just felt so terrible. So I've gotten really really diligent about um, upcycling any books of mine that are starting to get to that point. And so I've kept a pretty small collection, followed by the fact that I have moved overseas twice in my 20s and back to the United States in between. Um, books are heavy. So while I love them and I do still own some books, my collection is very finite and there are books that I own now that I want to read that are not going to come with me if I ever move again. Um, so that was one that, that was not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, if I had tried to attack this when I was younger, I think there'd be, I'd probably be crying in a corner still because I wouldn't want to get rid of my books. But so books, um, papers. So this is things like any papers you have for like school, credit card statements, like all kinds of papers, not including stationery that falls under kimono, which is the next category. So kimono is going to be like, all of your like travel toiletries, all your toiletries, makeup, cosmetics, like cosmetics and makeup are the same thing. Yes, I did just realize I said that. Um, stationery, craft supplies, like any of that kind of stuff, followed by sentimental items. So photos, old diaries, stuffed animals. This is actually a very, very horrible drawing of my favorite stuffed animal. Um, so yes, this is the basic order. And so, that's once you get started, but she actually recommends before you even start, so let's see if I can zoom back out, oops, there we go. So she recommends before you even start to actually sit down and think about what your ideal lifestyle is. So assuming that you had all the money in the world, what would you want your house to look like? Um, and I, I actually, when I started, um, didn't intend to draw my life as it is right now because honestly there are things about my apartment that while I love it eventually I would like to change because I do live in a one bedroom but I basically ended up basing it off of what I like about where I am now and then adding to it for certain things so I decided to try my hand at sketch noting because I usually just write a list and I thought that maybe looking back at this would be helpful for me rather than just seeing sort of a massive text. So this is what my ideal lifestyle is, but she recommends you can journal about it, you can draw pictures like I did, you can make like a vision board from like magazine cutouts, you can do whatever you want. Um, but she says that before you even start, you should really think about what you want your ideal lifestyle to be because that's going to help you when you are trying to decide if things actually spark joy because usually the things that are that are in line with the lifestyle that you want are also going to be the things that spark joy. Um, so yeah. So, and that is one thing that when she goes, when she recommends going through the steps, you actually need to like physically handle each thing um, on its own and consider whether it's something that actually sparks joy or not. So the way that I set about tackling this, because you do everything in your life and that can seem like a lot, even for somebody who lives in a tiny little one bedroom apartment, it's still, it's still a bit of a, um, still takes some time, let me just say. I'm, I've been working on this now for probably three or four days, and while I have made some really great headway, I am definitely not finished. So, this was what I made to kind of help me along. So I basically did all of the big categories, and then I sort of split them down. I also have a category here for my room in my parents' house, because since I have moved overseas several times, I have never actually brought everything that I own with me. 
um, because I was never really sure if it was going to be long term or not. So I need to really, this is actually when I'm home this summer is one of the things I'm going to work on. So I just did the five categories. I didn't actually break them down because every time I go home, I actually do work on like whittling down what I have there, but it's still, I still got some stuff. So, ah, and actually, so before I get into this, so for all of these spreads, for these and this, what I used is I picked this N15 Tombow for this black heading. I picked N55 for all of the gray headings. And I actually forgot that I had, oops, grab my markers. So I have for my ideal lifestyle, I wanted to stand out a little bit more. So I have 312 for the sage. And then in this little corner to also make that stand out but be subtle, I have N60 for this little box. So those were all the Tombow colors that I used. And then for all of the writing on this page, I actually used the Pilot, whoops, this way, Pilot G1.5. And for the writing over here, I actually sketched out all of my picture, all of my drawings first in this pencil. It's a 0.5, it's one of the Statler like mechanical pencils and I love this thing. Um, and I also used this eraser from Muji. So I used those to sketch everything out. And then I went back over my drawings with microns because they dry better and they don't smear like this does if I try and erase over it too fast. Um, so I used a couple of different sizes, but they're all the microns in here. So I think I stuck mostly with, I think thicker lines are gonna be like a 0.8. These are probably all 0.3 or 0.5 and I probably had 0.2 over here. Um, so basically that's all I used making the spreads. It's very, very straightforward. I wanted, I've been going for like a really minimal um, sort of layout recently, so I just kind of stuck with that. So yeah, so basically I broke it down this way. Now, full disclosure, um, I've gone about everything in roughly the right order. However, I made a separate category for myself that is digital which for me is also going to encompass a lot of the sentimental items because my photos are by and large digital. Um, I do have photo albums at my parents' house, but I don't have any photo albums here. So one of the things that I ran into, especially when I was going through papers, um, obviously, you know, clothing and books, uh, that I got through fairly well. And actually it was easier than I thought it was gonna be. I had only two dresses that I was like, on the fence and I ended up discarding them because I felt like with that much agony, they did not spark joy at this point. Um, so clothing was pretty good. Books are okay. I keep kind of going through my collection um, and I've got a couple that I know as soon as I read them, I'm going to donate them. So one of the great things is I actually have um, in my city, there are book boxes placed around the city and you can just drop off old books there and you can also just take, pick up any that other people have left. So for me, um, getting rid of books is not is not hard at all. And so I, I whittled down my collection to a fairly small number, but I do have books that I know that once I read them, they're, they're gonna go. So it's, it's not a permanent collection, if you will. Um, so it was papers that kind of, I, I started running into some problems because I am an English teacher. So I have a lot of papers for work that are physically papers that I wanna keep like one original so that I can make photocopies. And that way, if the printer is broken, I don't have to print, I can just make a copy, for example. Um, but I also have like linked items in with my digital stuff on my computer and on drives and all that kind of stuff. So I basically made the decision. I have only partially ticked all of these because, um, and actually documents I've probably almost got done, but all of these papers have some form digitally. And so I don't personally consider that I've gone through this, even though I've basically gone through everything except for what I have for university, because I'm still in university, so I, I have to kind of keep some of that stuff. Um, even though I've kind of gone through everything, I've only half ticked it off because it's not going to be finished until I go through the digital and kind of see side by side, like, okay, what do I need and what don't I need? Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of been a bit of an issue. And then going into kimono, I have also been going through, um, trying to pull out one section at a time. And so one of the things that I've been doing, which I know is like a major no-no for her, but to be honest, um, I am trying to do this while I'm also like working and doing whatever. And I live in a very confined space. 
is I have been going through bits when I have the time and trying not to leave too many piles out and about because I also have to still live my life kind of thing. Um, so I've actually probably gone through more of the kimono, but I haven't like fully gone through, although to be fair, I haven't really done all of my stationary stuff. I did go through pens um, mostly, but uh, like cleaning and tools, I'm getting there, but I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. And there are certain things that as I'm going through my daily life and I like open a cabinet and I'm like, oh man, this definitely does not spark joy. I'm getting rid of it. Um, in the hopes that doing a first pass like that, when I do finally have the chance to pull everything out together and look through it, it will be a little bit easier in terms of the space that I'm working with. Um, so yeah, sentimental, I think is going to be fairly quick just because I don't have as many sentimental things here. I do have some stuff, but I don't have as many as I would have if I had all of my childhood stuff. So that, that section I think is actually going to go a little bit faster. The one that's going to take me a really long time is digital. So that is going to be, that's going to be something to tackle later, later. So one of the other things I wanted to go through as I've like already rambled on for super long is as I've been going through things, um, I have been making a note, whoops, I've been making a note on this wish list page. So I actually, I do have a wish list in my, um, in my bullet journal, my personal bullet journal, but that is for actual like wish list. I don't need it, but I want it kind of stuff. Whereas this is going through things and realizing, especially, so a lot of this right now is clothing, realizing that, oh man, I like, I can't get rid of all of these like PJs, for example, because even though only like one or two things spark joy, I actually need more than a set of PJs and I don't have the money right now to in my budget to go out and just buy a whole new set of PJs that do spark joy. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm kind of making allowances where um, there are certain things that I know in my collection that I'm going to get rid of once I find a replacement. Um, because unfortunately, for those of us who are working on a budget, sometimes we have to keep things that don't spark as much joy because if we don't, we don't have something to replace them. So what I'm doing is I'm writing down what I've got and then as I'm going out and shopping and I'm kind of, and I see what there is and I, as I figure out my budget and you know make allowances for these things, I hope to eventually cross everything off or conversely decide that I don't actually need some of these things. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The one exception that I have made is I did get a couple of things for my bathroom that have been long, long overdue. Like I've literally been putting them off for like two years. Um, and I finally, as I was going through and doing the KonMari, and it was really bugging me that everything else was looking really nice and, and organized. And like, I don't have a shower caddy. All of the stuff in my shower, and I have a literal like square shower, everything was on the ground. Um, it was time. I needed a shower caddy. Um, but for almost everything else, it's staying on the wish list until I kind of go through everything and really sit down and think about what I want. So this was a first pass wish list, for example, with the clothing of stuff that as I was going through, I was like, oh man, I really need to replace this. But once I actually kind of live with everything, I will probably, you know, go through my clothing, especially again, or go through books again, go through um, some of the other things that I have. Um, as I kind of see how things are actually working, if I decide to discard more things or realize that I'm missing something, I hope to add it to the wish list and eventually get to it. One of the other things that I have not actually finished, but one of the other things that I would like to do is really revisit and inventory my wardrobe. And what I have done is I've left a page here. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a true capsule wardrobe necessarily, but I would also like to kind of take, take stock and see what I've got and kind of make a list and fill in some blanks. Um, so it's going to look kind of like, it's going to be kind of an add-on from this wish list, I think, um, as I get certain things. Um, but here I would like to have what I actually have in my wardrobe so I can kind of see at a glance what I've got. Um, whereas right now I just can kind of physically tell in my drawers sort of what I have. Um, but here I'd like to kind of get it on paper so that I can sort of keep track and see like, okay, you know, 
with what I have, how often do I actually have to do laundry? Is that something that I can live with? Awesome. So if I start getting too much stuff, then that means I need to also get rid of some things that are older and maybe have seen better days. Um, so that's kind of what I've got here. Again, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to do a one, like a true capsule wardrobe, um, especially since honestly, my favorite color is black. I wear like 80% black with some dark gray thrown in and a couple of accent colors in like uh, red, green, gray. Like I have a very sort of like, uh, I kind of know my style when it comes down to it. So I don't necessarily need all of that or want necessarily, um, but there are certain things that I would like to sort of track on here. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a super, super duper rambly video and I apologize. I hope it was maybe kind of interesting. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions about the KonMari specifically for me and how I'm doing it, leave them down below. If you have any questions about the actual system, I really recommend checking out the books. Um, I got them from the library because I live in France and I, I really didn't want to read them in French. I wanted to just kind of read them in English because I felt like with something as sentimental as the things that I um, own, I wanted to have it in my native language. Um, but yes, definitely check out the books if you are at all interested in this kind of a thing. Um, don't worry, she doesn't actually advocate like a super, super minimalist cutback lifestyle if that's not what brings you joy. Because I was kind of worried about that, that I was like, I'm going to have like four shirts and like that's going to be it. No, it's if it sparks joy, even if it means that your book collection is a hundred books, if they all spark joy, she is absolutely okay with you keeping it. So don't be scared away by that because that actually did kind of put me off of it for a while. And I have to say, I am super glad that I did it because now when I go in, even in my bathroom, like I walk into my bathroom and I see how it's organized and I just feel like so much happier. It's so strange, but it's true. Um, anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed, the, enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.